Dear brothers and sisters, it is nice to be here once again and to meditate the Word of God with you today. Uh, by the way, this is Bultman, my dear friend, that I take with me uh, sometimes when I come here in the shed. So today uh, we will look at uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verses 13 to 14. I'm going to read these verses later on. In life and throughout the history of mankind, there are and have been moments of deep crisis. All the things we have put our trust in fail. We are left with nothing other than memories of the past, as everything we live in and work for and believe in is destroyed. The special person we loved has gone, or perhaps we are disappointed in ourselves or in someone we believed in, by a friend, by a politician, by the powers of the world which are so tied to economic interests instead of working for the good, for the world and for peace. It is as if we have been pierced or are unable to look ahead with trust, unable to make plans. We are really unable to keep hope alive and our faith wavers and we feel that God is far away. Life seems sometimes to lose its significance for us because everything seems to overwhelm us and we have the impression that we are always giving way. If you look at the context of our passage in Isaiah, we can see that the people of Israel in exile in Babylon are feeling similar to us in some of our verses. There is a sense of disappointment a sense of having been abandoned, a lack of hope, the feeling that God is a long way away. Already for several decades, the nations of Israel have been in decline. The temple, which was built as a sign of the presence of God with his people, is nothing but ruins. David's dynasty is no more. Years go by and the exile seems never ending. By God, by now, God must have forgotten us. This is the terrible thought of the exiled people of Israel who feel abandoned, weakened in their faith and are clinging on the past. The memory of all the times throughout their history when God set them free. Israel had been the chosen people, but now this is all over. The exile, the consequence of God's judgment, has cancelled out everything. Life has lost its significance and interest. Now the people no longer expect anything from God. It is no longer possible to hope in a new, a different future. Israel can free, can't free itself. We can say the people are so poor and humiliated, so weak, that they can't possibly even think of standing up to powerful Babylon. The prophet speaks to these desolate people to comfort them and to restore their trust in God. The trust which comes from the knowledge that they have been pardoned. The prophet speaks in God's name and announces the amazing words that we am, I am about to read. For I am the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Do not be afraid. O oh, warm Jacob, O oh, little Israel, for I myself will help you, declares the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. These words are definitely given hope and hope to generations, we can say, of believers across the centuries. They are very gentle words and are amongst the best words in scriptures. They need no comment, we could say. It is impossible to see any more or anything better than what it is said here. Our poor attempts at saying things could not add anything. Our words can only be enlightened by these. And I'm, I'm going to read them again. For I am the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not, do not fear, I will help you. Do not be afraid for I myself will help you. I, the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I will be with you. But as we see in these verses, God spoke through a prophet. God shed his severe nature in order not to intimidate these disheartened people. 
These lovely words from Isaiah to the exiles can also be words of for all people in difficulty in our own time to those who are trying to rebuild their lives and their past. We think of people whose lives are torn apart by wars, the many who have lost all hope following disastrous earthquakes, all those who are leaving their homelands in Africa, Asia, the Indian Ocean and other parts of the world in order to crowd into foreign countries in their search for new possibilities in life. These words are also for those who, because of the current situation of COVID, have lost jobs, have lost homes and members of their families. These words are also for those who are ill and for those who have no hope left. In these verses which instill courage and are said in such a lovely way, sum up the story of God's love of his people and the story of God's love for each of us. Despite the distance we have put between us and God, God has not forgotten his people and he, would forget, he wouldn't forget us either. God has always kept his promises. He has stayed beside us and is always ready to help us, to free us when the storms of life make it seem as if we are in complete darkness. The Lord speaks in words full of love and an enormous love through which the bonds which bind us to God are strongly emphasized with the repetition of the word, I, I choose you. I have raised you up. I am with you. I am your God. I am your strength. I am your help. I sustain you. I and no one else. I only. Only I can comfort you help you, strengthen you. Only I can save you. In this passage, we see that as the Lord is ready to trust the people of Israel, the Lord is ready to rebuild our story, to show us a new future, a new path. God consoles us in our personal situations. We also often live difficult situations, great suffering, and we also need to hear words which will help us in life, which will comfort us and strengthen us. We also need to hear the words, do not be afraid, I am with you. Whether the situation you are experiencing, whether suffering you are going through, whatever it is you have to face, you also, like the Israelites, need to be comforted. You need somebody, somebody who comes to you to say, do not be afraid, I am about to rebuild your life. As you need to do is to, to believe in me and hope in a new future, that there is a new path for you. But we don't have prophets to say these things to us, unfortunately. Those who can speak words of salvation and hope that we so need to hear with authority. No one can say these things to each of us today. Only God can say these things because only He can change things and people, lead us out of trouble, rebuild our lives. God's words here, which promise freedom and peace, are important at this time of COVID because the, they promise us an even greater freedom, freedom from sin and death, freedom from fear and anxiety because Jesus has come and will make all things new, starting from now with his closeness, love and support. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each of you.